My mama taught me, if you can't say anything good about somebody, you just don't say nothing at all. I'm on the internet. Yes. I was trying to think what it was about Brother Mark that I didn't like, and I couldn't think of it, and then it just all of a sudden come back to me. Amen. And so. Uh, Amen. It's folks like Brother Mark that'll put you in evangelism. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I don't know where that come from. It just the uh, the book of Psalms today, chapter number eleven, and it is it is a blessing to be here, and I am grateful for Brother Mark and Mandy and uh, what the Lord's doing with them here and and uh, thankful for this church and uh, we covet your prayers that God would uh, just strengthen us and help us in these days and these hours and my our hearts have already been touched Amen. and uh, last night and this morning and and uh, really in, it's intimidating and uh, I, I kid folks I say well I sort of kid I said I am not responsible for anything I say amen with all this medicine they got me on amen and uh, so you pray for me and I'd appreciate it so very much amen. the uh, book of Psalms today chapter number 11 The Bible said, in the Lord put I my trust. How many glad you got something you can put trust in today? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. In the Lord put I my trust, how say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. David said, for lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. Verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Isn't it, isn't it amazing that this question is not directed to the wicked? It's directed today towards the righteous. Yes, yes, sir. Right. right. And I'm grateful that in these times that we're in, I'm grateful today that there are things that the righteous can do. Yes, right. Amen. Verse 4, the Bible says, The Lord is in his holy temple. I'm grateful for that. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the Lord's throne is in heaven. I'm thankful for that. And I'm grateful for this. The Bible says that his eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares and fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest. This shall be their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness and his countenance doth behold the upright. I want to begin this morning by, by saying this, that there are many elements in a child of God's life that have an, an eternal effect. Uh, I, I could say one of those elements would be charity. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians 13 that without it, we're nothing. Somebody asked the Romans, 
They said, what was it about the church, the Christians, that, that you uh, notice the most? And they said, well, number one, we notice that they will not come to our parties. Yeah. Right. Right. And then the second thing they said, they said, we notice my how they love one another. Amen. Right. You'll not go wrong today by having a life that's filled with charity. Yes. Right. And then I thought about this. I, I thought another thing that has a lasting effect would be that of forgiveness. You know, we are instructed to forgive as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. That's a lot of forgiveness. Yes, sir. Amen. And I, I, I noticed this, that it's real easy to go through life bearing grudges. Yes, sir. You say, well, I'm not. Yeah, I know. Yes, sir. Life is too short to go through it filled Amen. with bitterness. Amen. And bearing grudges. Amen. Amen. Another thing, another thing today that would have a, an, an eternal effect would be that of humility. The Bible does say that God resisteth the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Seems to be telling me today that God is selective with his grace. Uh, yes, sir. Amen. If you're going to be strong in grace, as the preacher preached so well, then what you and I better do, we better make sure that our life's not marked by pride, but it's marked by humility. Sure, yes. In fact, the Bible Amen. does say that we're to humble ourselves. Yes. God can humble you, trust me. Oh, yeah. Humility has an, an eternal effect. But I, I discovered this at the very top of the list and something that's given much attention to in the scripture is the element of faith. Here in the word of God, we find that, that David is, is speaking about this. And as a springboard and sort of a means of leaping into this endeavor, let me give you a few things about faith, bringing us to what I want to deal with today. The first thing would be this, the mere subject of faith is an, an enormous subject. It's big. It's, it's, it's a lot bigger than us. It's a lot bigger in the time that I have here before lunch. Everyone that's here could preach about faith and we would never scratch the surface. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it, it's an enormous subject, but then number two, it's an, an essential subject. Right. It's a must. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six that without faith it is impossible to please God. Right. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. Yes, sir. And then can I say this today? Faith is an unexpected subject. In essence, what I'm trying my best to get you to see is this, is that we're to be people of faith. Right, right, right. And if you and I today that are saved by the grace of God and got a right Bible, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. part of a right movement, Amen. Amen. with a relationship with the God of heaven, if you and I cannot have faith, then tell me who can. Right, 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 Richard. Yes, sir. One writer said this, that without faith we are as, as stained glass in the dark. Another one said that there are no miracles to men who do not believe them. 
Clark said this, faith is the daring of the soul to go farther than it can see. Then the prince of preachers said this, Spurgeon said, little faith will bring your soul to heaven. Great faith will bring heaven to your soul. But bringing us to the subject, to my message, I, 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 want, I want to say this. Faith will be an evident subject. Right, man. Show me somebody without, with faith, and I'll show you someone that won't have to say they got it. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. In the, in the time that I've tried to serve God, I have met people with incredible faith. And it was evident. Right. It was, their lives were marked by it. In fact, sometimes it seemed like it was to my shame. Yes, sir. Right. Sometimes, I don't know if you're like this or not, I find where I have faith, it's almost like I have mountain moving faith. Right. I, I can trust him for big things. But then it seems like there's times in my life that I don't have enough faith to believe in for the very little things. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. I got all the faith that you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll say this, faith is a lot easier to preach about than it is to practice. Yes, sir. Amen. And here in Psalms chapter number 11, we find the Bible teaches us that, that David is, is reminding us of the need in our life to trust him. Psalms chapter number 11 is to me divided into two sections. The first section is, is Psalms uh, 11, 1, 2, and 3. In this, uh, we find David's response. He's, he's making a response. He is responding uh, to, uh, uh, to some that had tempted him, that were trying to lure him, if you please, uh, into making a mistake. And then verses number 4 through 7, we find the reason of this. And... Uh, uh, and, uh, but today, if God will be my helper, I want, I, want, I want to deal with this response of David. And, and I, I want to talk to you this morning for a little bit on this thought. We need to be people of strong faith. Amen, sir. I promise you this, before we get out of here, you better believe in something. Could it be that's the reason why the Bible said, and, and I believe it's in the book of Luke, uh, the Bible said that when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. He's going to be looking for something. And I'm, I'm fearful today that in our minds, we got it all figured out what he's going to be looking for. And probably the truth is, a lot of that stuff is not what he's interested in. He's not interested in our buildings, although buildings are good. He's not interested, my friend, in our programs, although programs are good. He's not even interested in the records you keep. What he's interested in, he's interested in people with faith. And you and I need to be people of strong faith. Amen. Number one, you need to be a person of strong faith when fleeing is an answer. Verse number one, David said, In the Lord put I my trust, how say ye to my soul. Here it is, flee as a bird to your mountain. Yeah. When moving on is an answer. You better have your strong faith. Yes, sir. Amen. Psalm 55, 6, again, he said this, and I said, oh, that I had the wings like a dove. For then I would fly away and I'd be at rest. Right. And I'm glad that we got something better than the wings of a dove. Amen. Uh, amen. Yes, amen. 
Amen. We got a God in heaven, my friend, whose eyes behold and they cry and they see that we can cry out to and my friend that, uh, that, that will uh, deliver us in the times of our life. I got a confession to make. Y'all probably be going to hear about it. And so I feel like I need to say it before you hear it from somebody else. I hear voices. I hear voices without, but then I hear voices within. Spooky, ain't it? I know. You see, there's two of me. There's the good me and the bad me. Everybody likes the good me. No one likes the bad. I don't look at me like that. And you know what I've discovered, Brother Mark? It's not the voices that are without that affect me near as much as that voice within. Amen. Voices do have a way of making you want to move on. I think about Naomi when she fled Bethlehem, Judah, the ideal place to raise a family. And just because you are in an ideal place does not mean there's not going to be no famines. Right, right. Amen. I don't know what it was that convinced her, but something did that the best thing that they could do for the family is to go to Moab. God's wash pot. Right. You don't go, my friend, to Moab to get blessed. You go to Moab to find judgment and have God to chastise you. But forces have a way of making us even uh, flee the place of bread and praise and an ideal place to raise a family and to do good uh, and, uh, and to go to this place of Moab. I never did get used to that when I pastored. I think about this I, I think about what about David Psalm, uh, 1 Samuel 27 1 uh, David said in his heart David's like us he had good days and bad there were times that David was on the mountain and there was times that my friend David had his struggle here in Psalms 11, he's on the mountaintop. He's full of energy. He's full of faith. He's encouraging. He's, he, he's strengthening. He's motivating. But in 1 Samuel 27, the same one that wrote Psalms 11 says this. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Yes. There's nothing better for me that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistine, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hands. Same one. You ever have issues with you? How you can be so full of faith one moment and be so full of doubt and Let me, let, me, let me just make this comment and then move on. The Bible said that David said in his heart. It's one thing to think it, Brother Paul. It's not what's up here that's going to be the final decision or the final uh, event. I, there's been a lot of times that I've thought things and then I don't know I went to bed one night and got up and it was just better 
It's one thing for the emotions to be up here, but if it ever gets down in here, you're headed for trouble. You know what? David really believed. It was in his heart. There's nothing else left for me to do than to flee. Was there something else? Sure there was. The same God that delivered the bear and the lion and Goliath into his hand. It's the same God that was going to deliver him from Saul. You better have your strong faith when fleeing is an answer. You ever feel like moving on? Well, I'm just going to quit believing what I believe about this Bible. Well, I'm going to change churches. I ain't getting what I used to get. I, I remember this before I went in evangelism. I'd have people come up to me and they say, Lord, have mercy. We've been looking for a church like this forever. Yeah. 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 They don't make them like this. And the preaching could not in the morning. We like, we like somebody just tell us like it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. And then, you know, I'm thinking, we all ain't going to stray. Yeah, yeah. And then it wasn't long till you couldn't find them with a search warrant. <laughs> and when you did find them, you want to know what's going on. They said, well, to be honest with you, I'm just not getting what I need. Yeah. 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 Amen. You ever feel like fleeing? Better have a strong faith when fleeing's an answer. And then number two, let me say this. You better have your strong faith when the foes of life are active. Amen. That's good, preacher. The Bible said, for lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. Notice, notice. Quickly, number one, notice the reality of the enemy. He's real. Yes, sir. You got an enemy. That's right, sir. Amen. Everybody don't appreciate it. It's all, appreciate you. Uh, it's already been said this morning. Everybody don't like you. There are people that are not interested in your succeeding. They want to see you fall. And they're not only not interested in seeing you succeed, but wanting to see you fall. They'll and, uh, put forth effort to bring that to bout. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's real. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil's roaring life, walketh about, seek him whom he may devour. Can I tell you, my friend, he's looking for you. Amen. And some of you, whether you realize it or not, while you're at ease in time, huh, my friend, he has got you in the crosshairs. Can I vent? Something that disturbs me and bothers me to no end is that we're engaged in a war where the enemy is taking the war a lot ser more serious than we are. You say, well, what would you do? I said, well, I'd nuke them yes. till they glow in the dark, then I'd shoot them. <laughs> Aren't you glad I ain't president? It'd be a lonely world, wouldn't it? What I'm trying my best to get you to see is this, that my friend, the devil is a lot more serious in regards to this warfare. We're in a warfare. Somebody said the church is a hospital. No, it's not. The church is a, is a barracks where we're supposed to be training soldiers. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. 
And the, re- the enemy's real today. And what I'm trying to get you to see here in the Word of God is that, hey, they are ready. They got aim. They're fixing to shoot at the upright in heart. And when these times come, you better have your strong faith. The reality of the enemy, the readiness of the enemy. The bow's bent. The Bible tells us that the arrow has been made ready. I'm not a hunter. I try, but I just don't have a lot of, Brother Matt, I don't have a lot of stories to tell of my great achievements. I did shoot a little doe one time. A gut shot her. Oh, Oh, yeah. In between heavens and about losing everything I've had to eat for the last two two days, I finally got her clean and I said, I'll never do it again. (laughs) I I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm I'm not like some. I, I, I don't. But, but I remember, I, I told Don, I said, you know, I think, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go do some hunting. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> she said, Dave, why? <laughs> and I said, free meat. Yeah. If you buy, I love beef. But if you bought any here lately, you know, you know, they, they like their beef. And so I said, free meat. And uh, so uh, little did I understand what was involved in free meat. <laughs> so I told Donna, I said, uh, I said, it ain't going to cost much. And I said, uh, probably $30 to get the license and tags and. And then, uh, and it dawned on me, I said, I gotta have a gun. <laughs> so I, I, you know, trying to be not so, not so expensive, and I said, well, I just get me not the best and not the worst, and so I found one on eBay for 600. And then I said, my eyes is not near as good as they used to be. And so I said, I've got to have a scope. And she said, well, what's that going to cost? And I said, 200. She said, she said, I thought you said 200. And I said, I did. <laughs> well, since my heart, I can't get with it like I used to. So I've got to have a way of getting in and out of the woods. So I got me a four-wheeler. <laughs> I, found, I found a deal for 4500 And nobody's going to believe I went hunting, so I said, I've got to have a camera. <laughs> and then I said, I ain't got a hunting knife, so I've got, got to have a hunting knife. And so anyway, to make a long story short, that... 100 pounds of meat if you got a good one. That free meat I was talking about, it ends up being around $62 a pound. (laughs) So it's a lot cheaper on me to just buy the tags and just let somebody else kill it. I have nothing to prove. You don't have to tell people. I'll even mount the head on the wall. And put a tag underneath it says, got by Brother David. I don't have to tell you how I got it. I don't look at me like that. So by now, I guess you got it all figured out. I really don't know much about hunting. I'm slow, but I'm not so slow that I don't know that when the hunter has got the bow bent, And he's got the arrow ready. He's fixing to shoot. 
Can I tell you today that my friend, what he is after, not only the reality and the readiness of the enemy, he's ready to shoot. And the sad truth of it is this, is that we're giving him too much a target to shoot at. The rendering of the enemy, the Bible said that he may shoot at the upright probably in the heart. What the enemy does, he does secretly. He does secretly, in private, in the dark. Yes, sir. You better have your strong faith. Amen. Yes, sir. When the foes of life are active. Amen. And then, thirdly, let me say this in close, and you need a strong faith when the foundations are being attacked. Amen. Yes. Bible says in verse number three, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? John Phillips in his book in, on Psalms, he said the word foundation denotes the, the settled order of things. You know, I've had the privilege of setting up under some of the greatest men of God. And Brother Andy, I remember listening to old preachers preach about things that was going to come upon the world. And Brother Carl, I even scratched my head and think, where'd they get that at? And then I've had heard, I have heard statements and I said, never in America. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, God birthed this country into existence as sure as I'm standing. And it might happen, happen in Russia. It might happen uh, here or there, but it'll never happen in America. But I'm telling you, I went to bed and I woke up and I'm telling you, we are in a time uh, that the very core foundation uh, that our country and our church and our home and our life, uh, they're being attacked uh, and I, you give them a half a chance and they're going to destroy them right before our very eyes. Yes, sir. I think about the foundation of law. I think about the foundation of order. What about the foundation of truth? Have you ever seen the like? I be I don't know what to believe. I think I think the world and society and the news and the media in the political arena, they want to dumb us down. They want us to be just ignorant that we ain't got a clue what's going on. They want us to believe what they want us to believe and what they don't want us to believe, they're going to try their best to tear it down right before our very eyes. What about the foundation of justice? The foundation of morality. Somebody said, Brother David, don't you know this is a new morality? No, it ain't. It's still immorality. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. What, about, what about the foundation of decency? Sad truth of it is, there used to be a time uh, that my friend, the drunkard, and those that would deep in sin, uh, they had more decency uh, than a lot of the, the, the Christians today have. The foundation of integrity. These are things that are being shaken. I'm telling you, my friend, there's a movement to tear down these foundations. Humanism, liberalism, modernism, the media, they're bulldozers that are raging against these foundations. And the sad truth of it is this, the people of God are, are being used uh, by uh, losing their distinction. We're salt. But there's the danger of it losing its savor. Would it be light in contrast to darkness? 
Are we okay? But if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What you gonna do? Amen. Brother Andy, you're a smart man. What you gonna do? But well, Robert got the most utmost uh, respect in you for you. What you and Miss Pam gonna do? My mama used to say stuff like, you know, I found out once my mama died and grandkids started coming in my life. I discovered a lot of that stuff my mama used to warn me about is coming to pass. And this is what she told me. She said, son, she said, I finally got my children raised and I thought that it was going to be time to just sit back and enjoy life and then here comes grandkids. And I'm having to worry about and fret over my grandkids. And that's what, I worry, that's what I fret about. That's what I worry about. I worry about my grandchildren. I worry about my son, daughter. Because if, I, I know this. I know this. I know that if God tarries his coming, I'm probably not going to get to see him live. Uh, graduate, so forth. Be young adults. And I worry and I fret and I wonder what in the world can we do? And I've often have heard this that I want them to know the America that I knew growing up. I still remember, I still remember sitting in them classes and at Thanksgiving they'd bring out the coloring sheets of pilgrims and the Mayfire and We'd color and take them home. And now they're trying to rewrite history. Yes, sir. They're trying to take right. everything out of it that reminds us of God and His sovereignty and His. Absolutely. Amen. Right. Yes, <laughs> what, what you going to do? Let me give you three suggestions. Number one, when these things are being attacked, and it happens every day, Number one, let's rely on the Father. You see, faith in God is not believing that God can do anything, but faith in God is believing that in spite of what God does, He's still God. And, and I'll tell you what I'm trusting in to get me through these times. That's the Lord. Amen. David said, In the Lord put I my trust. I'm just going to trust him. Then number two, I'll tell you another thing. When the foundations are being destroyed, let's refuse to run. Do not want to give the devil satisfaction that he caused me to run. And then lastly, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let's rebuild the foundations. Amen. 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 Amen, God. I don't know if I, I guess I have. I, I probably have told this. When I, when I was, when I was, before I ever started school, we lived in Dalton, Georgia. We moved all over the place. Never had a lot of stability growing up. And, uh, Born in North Carolina, moved to Tacoa, and then from Tacoa to Dalton, back to Tacoa. And somebody said that we moved so much when I was little, said every time the truck would pull up, said the chicken would cross their legs, getting ready to be tied, put on the truck. Amen. And uh, they was just used to it. And, and, uh, but, but I remember in those, those early days, I had a godly mama that I miss today so much. And I had a godly uh, dad in the latter years and I miss him but I, I remember in those days that dad had a hard time with women and drinking and I remember as a little old boy he used to take me with him and and uh, we'd visit some woman he'd have some kind of 
reasoning and and uh, and uh, why he was doing it, and they'd leave me by myself, and they'd just disappear. And I, I was so young and ignorant; I didn't know what was going on. I do now. And uh, and I, I remember I remember coming in, finding my mama with the family portraits, and she was cutting her picture out of the portraits. Don't have a picture, Brother Robert, of my mom and dad together and me when I was a little old boy. And uh, you ever heard of the old the saying, they were born on the wrong side of the tracks? That would have been me. And I guess what I'm trying my best to say, I, 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 I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I said, if I was brought up under an environment, sometimes I wonder, Brother Andy, if I had brought up in an environment like you was with a godly daddy and a godly mom and church and stuff I had of course I, I pastored here for 12 years and you knew the b battle I have on my mind and depression and things of that nature and uh, and I thought if I was brought up under another environment if I'd be like I am I guess I'm behind my back I'm a miracle that I'm doing what I'm doing today and uh my mom and dad divorced, went their ways. And I remember my daddy begging my mama to take him back. And I remember when I was in second grade, they were remarried. And, uh, and I remember my mama asking, asking the Lord, Vietnam War was full rage. And, and my brother Harry had been drawn up for a dra by draft. And my mother, mother knew because of his asthma and things that it was gonna be his death. And so she cries out to God. I remember hearing her pray this prayer. If you'll keep Harry out, I'll take Atley back and we'll try our best to raise David in a home with a mom and dad. And that's what they did. And you say, what's that got to do with anything? All around her were just marks and signs of a foundation that once stood that has been I'm talking to probably somebody today that you've got some foundations all around you that's been torn down. I had those same sentiments that you was talking about in those early days of hungering and thirsting. And it was an obsession and I prayed and I begged God. I had a mission instructor at Tabernacle that said this. He said, I double dog dare you to ask God to let you be a missionary. I wasn't about to because he didn't want to be one. And uh, in that time of my life, I finally got to the place where I give it 100% to him. Yes, sir. And I begged God, I said, please let me be a missionary. <laughs> I'll go wherever you want me to go. I said, if it causes me and my family, if it causes this, if it causes this. I said, God, I won't. And now here I am, pushing 60. And I look back and I find myself too many times thinking about how it used to be. If I had my time to go over, I'd do this. And, but I'm trying to get you to understand is that we don't have to run. That's good. Amen. We can trust God. Right. And we can rebuild those foundations Amen. that life was built upon. When my dad died back in 1981, I believe it was, there was somebody went into a church that uh, and killed the pastor. Well, we were members of my brother's church, my brother Harry. And Daddy always sat on the back. And somebody asked him, they said, Atley, why you sit on the back? And he said, because if anybody comes in after my boy, they're going to have to go through me to get to him. That's a long ways from where I was at when I was a boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. You need a strong faith to rebuild those foundations. Yes. We can do it. We can do it while we stand, while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Miss Ashland's coming. While her heads are bowed, her eyes are closed. Would there be somebody listening to the sound of a voice? Say, Brother David.
Oh, God, you talking about voices. I've been hearing some voices. There's times I really would like to just fly away, be at rest. There's times I just like to run. All around me, I'm telling you, are signs of what I used to have and how it used to be and how I'd like to see it again. The devil's really, the devil is really shooting it up right and hard. He's aiming at my heart. Hadn't hit it yet, but I'm telling you, I bear some marks. I bear some marks. It'd be somebody say, Brother David, would you pray for me? God would help me have the strong faith that I need that in those times to rely on God and just rebuild and refuse to run. Would you slip your hand up to be anybody? Some's come. God sees this hand. Somebody else. Somebody else. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you take the message. Lord, I pray you'd speak to hearts and draw by thy power. Thank you for what we have heard. And Lord, I pray you'd minister to us. And God, you'd meet the needs as only you can. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While these are praying, as she plays, if you need to come, we invite you to come, would you? What you trusting in? What are you relying on? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come?